Welcome back to Twisted Metal. We are digging deeper into this ill-fated reboot. <laughs> Bottom of the pit and um, JCB equipment. Anyone? Like, why isn't there a uh, like a big digger in this game? You would have thought it'd be obvious. Hmm. Like construction equipment or something. Yeah. Uh, we got a uh, tow truck. That's something. Yeah, not quite the same, but I guess it'll do. Yeah, it's not Mr. Slam. That's for damn sure. Yeah. I hated Mr. Slam, so no problem with that, but... Likewise. <laughs> it's, it's the principle. Do you like the holidays, sweet tooth? I do. I... I love to see the people so happy, so excited. Because when they dive violently, they're so surprised. Am I right? No one expects to die on Christmas. Oh, and this year, I've added something new, just to shake things up a bit. The electric cave. Stay inside the cage when it's active, Sweet Tooth. And if you leave the cage, your grace period drains. And if you're out of grace and you drive outside the cage, well, best not to think of such things. So, yeah, it's Christmas time and our level type is no gift. We are going to suffer terribly for this electric cage match. Uh, yeah, I hated this stage the first time through, just because... This is where my first run uh, ended. <laughs> Didn't get past this part. <laughs> yeah, it took me forever to get past it. And that was using Sweet Tooth, as we said, is ridiculously overpowered. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a Battletoad situation. It's like, it, it's trying... It's, it's weird, because it feels like it almost like it's trying to be like one of those Battle Royale games from, you know, the last couple of years. And uh, there's a, an area that keeps shifting and move, getting smaller, and... It manages to be so incredibly unfun with it. Yeah, I don't think they should use a city level for the Royale idea because uh, I don't I, I don't think it's uh, particularly well suited for it even if they did it well I think uh, like the first map would have been better yeah something less vertical than this map mm. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree there's a lot that goes to waste in this level and we're not going to see very much of it despite the fact that this is a very large and heavily detailed level. Yeah, or they could have just not done it and had it as a regular level rather than trying to be all gimmicky with it. Would have much preferred that, yes. Also, um, Holy Reaper shit. Special is the best <laughs> fucking thing in the game. <laughs> yeah. I forgot how ridiculous it gets. Yeah. You are outside the cage. So it's just like all the previous Mr. Grimm specials. It's a gigantic, no homing, just chunk of damage, but if you drag it across the uh, highway, it catches fire and deals triple damage. Lordy. 150, yeah. Question there, uh, when you got magnetized by the car and rammed into the wall, did it do extra damage on you that you were magnetized, or did it actually reduce the damage because momentum was lost? Um, I think it just did normal ram damage, oh, okay. but then he did the special which deals its own damage. Plus, he took me out of the cage, which reduced my uh, grace period. That's going to deal damage to me in the long run. Yeah. But we are about to come across the part that makes this whole cage match awful. The ice rink. Uh, <laughs> nothing like ice physics in a fucking driving game. They did well in Twisted Metal 2, I think. <laughs> but yeah, Twisted Metal 1 also had an ice rink. This is actually based off of a level in Twisted Metal 1, and this is the ice rink from that level. Oh. Yeah. Don't remember those games being quite as aggravating as this one, though. 
Yeah, you lose 100% of your traction. You cannot uh, choose which direction you're going while you're in the ice rink. Yeah, because I remember working out quite early on, you can strafe in this. Which I don't remember being able to do in any of the previous games. Uh, Twisted Metal 2, um, they... Uh, uh, the only map I found really aggravating in 2 uh, was uh, the Netherlands. But that was uh, because I like playing glass cannons and yeah... Mm, I wasn't good enough to do that on the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> Reliably. It was pretty much the only map I died repeatedly on uh, as the glass cannons. Or, uh, as well as uh, the rooftops when playing as Grasshopper for obvious reasons. Grasshopper is trash. That, that's the reason. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, extra trash when you're trying to do trick jumps on rooftops. Yeah. So rep dinosaurs. Yep. That whole section, uh, they just put a cage around that big building, but the other enemies didn't want to go in the building, so all I had to do was go fight the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Which should be awesome, but... <laughs> They're extinct again. So much for the Ice Age. It's like the the, pro the main problem with this stage as well is there's just not much to talk about. Like, you're, you're I mean, just, there would be. There's a huge level, and it's yeah. full of details and cool stuff to see. You're not allowed to see it. You have to go to the goddamn cage. Yeah, it's every thirty seconds. It's you know, jump monkey. <laughs> yep. So yeah, like. If once you get to see it properly, there is a hell of a lot in here and some really nice details, as with all the stages, yeah. but, like, damned if you're ever going to get to see them. Yeah, I'd love to just be going around and exploring the uh, areas and all the art assets they built and the Christmas theme that they worked in. But no. Gotta go to the ice rink and spin around in circles, unable to control myself. Dance for us, monkey! <laughs> The only reason I can see the the reason for them doing that is that holy crap we make we made the map so big there were no actual fights or it took too long, and that this was their solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in theory it would be a decent solution, but they really needed to tweak it a little bit and make it just work better. Yeah, I mean it would work if there was like a, a 32 player mode or you know for like large scale um, combat. Yeah, but. I mean, even in single player, you're getting crowded by the enemy every chance they get, so I, don't, mm. I still don't see what the problem is. Yep. I mean, part of the problem is that the cage moves, and um, when it moves, there's no like overlap period where the new cage is existent at the same time as the old cage. Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah, you lose like 20 seconds every time the cage moves, mm. just through no fault of your own just a required element of the level's design. Which makes the slower vehicles horrible. Yeah. Again, like this game as a whole, it's it's really good ideas, just performed poorly. Uh, this is the part where I fucked up really, really bad. <laughs> Do not go into the subway, especially when you don't know how to get out, because my screen is half covered by the redness. I don't know where I'm going. So that's actually quite realistic for New York, from what I've heard. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'm never uh, rapidly having my health drained while I'm in the subways of New York, but other than that, yeah, it's pretty realistic. Uh, li uh, licked uh, my arm uh, handles in the cars. <laughs> not taking any advice from you. <laughs> so clearly some conversations have been happening when I've not been around, and um, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I've never been to New York, uh, but I'm, I'm basing this entirely on the Simpsons episode where Bart tries to make money by licking the post and oh man, I'm way over uh, my head here. Uh. <laughs> yes. Also, go from one of the uh, World Trade Center towers to the other. That's yeah. a fun time in uh, New York City, oh, according yeah. to the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, but they put all the jerks in tower too. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, we just out-edged uh, Twisted Metal 2012. Good work, guys. <laughs> also, you killed Junkyard Dog completely by accident. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting bounced into you it. You should not get the kill there, to be quite honest. There they, they did the annoying thing that the AI constantly does. I was uh, barreling towards a health pickup that I desperately needed, and they froze me a millimeter away from it. Usually when that happens, someone also swoops by and takes the health pickup before I can. 
Plus, I was about to kill Junkyard Dog. Eventually, someone pinballed me into him, thankfully. It's, it's, it's like half the, the the kills on this stage seem to be completely by accident, and I don't know. I can I I can support that because it's funny. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's gonna get funnier in a second. Towards the end of this video, something really funny happens. But um, until then, we got a lot of time. To but waste. you 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 could see there one of the main issues they have with the design, uh, the graphic design of the game, where every single shot from that machine gun uh, uh, made spark so big, so it co yeah, they covered the entire screen. Mm -hmm. There's no way to get the real sense yeah, of not being able to see what's going on is a big problem. That that's not good. That's just they should have noticed that because I think everyone who played the game noticed that. Oh yeah. Like, I can't see when uh, the cage, when I'm out of the cage, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look so bad in the video, but when I'm actually playing, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, that's not the side <laughs> with the wheels out long. <laughs> you got served. <laughs> but uh, this level, I got stuck on it for literal months. I couldn't mm. beat it. But nowadays, I can beat it pretty consistently. It's just really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do not like the gimmick at all. Like I said, it's it's a huge stage. There's like an entire underground map which you should be able to explore, but there's there's nothing. It's they they steer you off to the most boring sections of the map as well, mm -hmm. and they loop you back to the same area a couple yeah. times. It's like the fact that half the cages seem to be wrapped around buildings. Give, it does you no favors. Yeah. But we're done now. Oh, uh, thank you. Now it's time for um, uh, Sweet Tooth Story to get really disgusting and horrible in what might be the worst cutscene in the entire series. Like how the guy just sort of shoom, shoved right back into place there. <laughs> I, I must say that I'm really glad we don't ever have to uh, play through that entire map again. <laughs> There was a time right after she escaped that I almost caught her. I could sense where she was, her fear. It was so ripe. This would be fun. It was like Christmas morning. Every hallway filled with little gifts. Little, tiny, blood-filled gifts. So many of them tried to fight. I think they wanted to make it fun for me. I think they were happy for me. Looking back, I'm so glad I decided to take the stairs. Her sweet stench lingered in the hall, but I had just missed her. That name. Say cheese, cheese. It reminded me of how I hated him. How I hated being him. His stupid little life. That stupid little job. It took me years of screaming and clawing and breaking him down. Years of calling out to him, trying to get him to set me free. But he was such a coward. Then one night it happened. One night I called. And he answered. And after I got him to carve me, I killed him. For my first murders, I chose the perfect targets. The 
perfect family. I chose his family. Marcus, no! Marcus doesn't live here anymore. Please, no! Marcus, wait! Shut up and bleed, you mother... <laughs> they all died so easily. Except for her. She was a surprise. Where did she go? I'll find her. I'll fucking find her. Can't hide from me. You can't hide from daddy. So, yeah, that's really gross, unpleasant cutscene that I really did not enjoy it, but uh, what are you gonna do? It's twisted metal. Yeah. I guess we'll talk more about that a little later. And this one was not censored in Europe like Black was. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I've seen all these cutscenes, tr trust me. Um, and um, yeah, I didn't pirate the game or anything. Not worth it on consoles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not worth it. Yeah, I didn't really get to play Twisted, Black, uh, Twisted Metal Black properly until I was able to emulate it. Killing your own family. A nice touch, Mr. Kane. They held me back. Yes, I suppose they did. So anyhow, this is Watkins Harbor. Grimy, rundown, lost hopes around every corner. Your kind of place, yes? And this is Juggernaut. He won't appear on radar, and he's very hard to kill. Every few minutes, he'll drop a new contestant onto the battlefield. So find him quick, and kill him quicker. It helps to shoot his insides while his doors are open. More damage that way. Same with the grill. Aim for Juggernaut's front to take him down fast. Stay alive, Sweet Tooth. The one that got away? You're getting so close. Okay, time to deal with the Juggernaut gimmick. He doesn't show up on the map, but you can see his name just out on the, uh level and he's got a timer above it so there he is you want to head right for him and one hit kill him <laughs> with <laughs> reaper's chainsaw wow oh, oh um, this, game. this vehicle is way too overpowered and i'm putting it away i'm not allowed to use it anymore it's too good <laughs> i feel someone should have done some testing <laughs> no fucking kidding <laughs> Jesus. Especially since it, there was no uh, collision dam ram damage. Yeah. So uh, we're not going to see the gimmick at this level. <laughs> we will see it later on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> it is nice when you know you can, you can go in a game and just go, you know what? Fuck your gimmicks. <laughs> yep. But 150 damage on that chainsaw. What are they thinking? <laughs> Like, no one cared. You did way more than 150 there. <laughs> yeah, it dealt it dealt double damage because I hit uh, Juggernaut's weak point. Uh, it's like I was like I was thinking the other day about the first time I ever played any of the Yakuza games. Completely fell in love with the Yakuza 2 when I realized that there was a dude that was powering up in the middle of a boss fight, and I could just drop kick him. <laughs> just like <laughs> you know, fuck fuck your fancy gimmicks. Boot to the face. Oh, hey, you're not powering up anymore. Let's introduce your teeth to the concrete. So it's, it's just really 
satisfying when you get to do that. So uh, let's let's go back to talk about that cutscene a little more, because I think it's, you know, one of the problems with this game. Like, the gameplay is technically salvageable, the cutscenes I don't think are salvageable at all. No. Definitely not Sweet Tooths. Um... Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we, we only speak of the cutscenes that are shown so far, yeah. I figure. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I said, it's, it's gratuitous, but to a point where it's like, eye-rolling. You know, mm -hmm. like as I said, like I enjoy watching you know gore fest horror movies, but a lot of the ones Likewise. which, are, but a lot of the ones which I watch tend to you know have something more to them. Like Saw, yeah, okay, that is just pure you know enjoyment factor because they are so over the top, and because they try and cram in a coherent story, and it's like how are going to do it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is half the, half the fun, you know. But I did like that guy low riding there. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to you know some of the wannabes, and it's like, no, it's, there's there's nothing to it other than let's see how many organs we can throw at the screen. As I said, you know, how how much yeah. how gory and disgusting can we make it? So there's no there's nothing to it beyond sheer vile fascination. Yeah, so David Jaffe said that the reason he made Twisted Metal Black so, like, uh, edgy and over-the-top and grim was because Twisted Metal was always meant to be shocking, and Twisted Metal 1 was shocking when it came out. Hmm. But what made it shocking was no longer shocking in 2001 when Black came out. So he cranked up the, uh, the edge factor. So his excuse for this game would probably be that it's uh, 2012 now. It's... 11 years later, so he cranked it up again and again and again. So he's now at the optimum level, right? He's like blaming us for the game being so edgy. Uh, that's a, Because that, we are so desensitized. Yeah, that actually reminds me of uh, one of the reasons that this game is so extremely disgusting, since a large part of it's, hey, let's jerk off on how edgy and uh, uh, psychopathic uh, sweet tooth is. <laughs> And then he has said that, yeah, it's a part of his own personality, Sweet Tooth. Yep, yeah. absolutely, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, that's probably my main issue, actually. Because he thinks that this makes him cool, or something. Yeah, like, um, Rob Zombie, when he was making the, um, Halloween remakes, Oof. he said, uh, yeah. <laughs> he said he made them really, really gross and upsetting. Because uh, it's a story about a murderer. You're not supposed to enjoy it. You're supposed to, like, have a bad time. And if you're there to watch a murderer, you should feel bad. It's your own fault that you're doing this to yourself. And also, he was clearly masturbating over the amount of gore that he put into that movie. See, the problem I had with it was just that it was... It over-explained everything. Like, you don't need to know what bands Michael Myers listened to as a kid. Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. He, he works better, you know, for, for a long time, he was known just as The Shape. Like, you knew nothing about him other than he was a troubled, t troubled kid who killed his babysitter on Halloween. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Giving him, like, a 45-minute backstory is pointless, and uh, it's just one of the many things I hate about, that, about, about those two movies. They're just really, really bad. Yeah, and the reason they over-explained it was because Michael Myers is the hero of that movie. Yeah. He's not the villain. He's the one you're supposed to like watching, even though mm, Rob Zombie's whole thing is you're not you're bad for liking to watch this. Yeah. Because he's a hypocrite. Like, having a serial killer as a protagonist, totally fine with. Interesting point of view. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, fantastic movie if you haven't seen it. Has uh, has two serial killers as the the protagonist, based off real serial killers. Yeah, or Dexter the first couple of seasons. Yeah, and it's there's a world of difference between having a serial killer as a protagonist and having them as a hero. Mm -hmm. And which is also what uh, this game does. Yeah, and as much as I love Rob Zombie's music, you know, like absolutely phenomenal musician, guy cannot make a movie to save his life. Yeah. So I think with this game that David Jaffe, when he was writing it, he absolutely thought that Sweet Tooth murdering his family was a bad thing and wanted it to be portrayed in a negative light. 
but he also made it exploitative and fetishistic. And he also, furthermore, definitely thought that the hospital rampage where he kills everybody, all those innocent people, that that was awesome, and he wanted you to enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, you, you do kind of get the impression that when he was writing there or di uh, directing, he was like, man, this is fucking awesome. 100%, yeah. yeah. When he was like making the actual cutscenes. This is just so cool. That part is supposed to be great. And if anyone was doubting it, the final thing when he kills that... Uh nurse or whatever he is with the, the sign. Oh, uh, that is it's dumb. The, yeah. Those are often made out of cardboard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like You could get away with uh, something like that in a movie like Hobo with a Shotgun. Yeah, or de de Dead Snow. Which is deliberately meant to be over... It's meant to be dumb as hell and over the top and silly. But they're still kind of playing this like it has a modicum of believability. Yep. So they're, they're, they're really trying to have their cake and eat it. Yeah, and the main thing is that it's just completely humorless. Like, this is just violence. That's all they present to you. They don't present any point to it. There's no, like... I mean, there is a twist, but it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking dumb. <laughs> and if you didn't see it coming, then clearly you haven't been paying attention. Which, to be fair, can't blame you. So that is why the cutscenes in this game are bad, even though they are very similar to the cutscenes in Twist the Metal Black, which are very good. Yeah, I think it's because Black, it walked a fine line between edgy and good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, edgy can be, it can be enjoyable when done right. This isn't it. <laughs> it's, as you say, it's, it's just some guy's jerk-off fantasy. <laughs> yep. Like, put, put it bluntly, David Jaffe was writing this, and he was just like, yeah, this is awesome, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> he was writing it with one hand. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's disappointing. But we survived the worst of it. I mean, it does get much better, but it does get better. <laughs> yeah, I mean... The, the the final character storyline is probably the best of the three for my money. Just because it's the most interesting one. And it's the most unique, but mm. no spoilers just yet. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> and we are just about done with this level because I broke the gimmick. <laughs> um, the first time I played this level, uh, I did something fairly similar. It took more than one chainsaw to take out Juggernaut, but... I killed it very quickly nonetheless, and then I finished up the rest of the enemies in about five minutes because I stuck with Reaper, <laughs> and I got a gold medal. So that's why you don't use the various vehicles that they give you in this game. You just use Reaper or Sweet Tooth, and you stomp everybody and get gold medals. Yeah, it's really sad that there's only really like three, maybe four viable vehicles in the whole game. Yep. Another example of the... Uh, lackluster design. Yeah. And once we get to the uh, level select screen, we'll see the next example, the <laughs> Twisted Race, is up next. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, this is when I stopped playing for a while. So next time we'll be wrapping up Sweet Tooth Story, when we see the first race and the first boss fight. On the plus side, at least they front load all this crap. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah.